Uh, one of my hobbies is foraging for wild edibles and medicinal plants. Uh, it's a fun hobby because you actually come home with something. Um, it, you know, it's productive. You, you, uh, you have something to show for it. It's also a cool skill to have in emergency situations if you're lost in the woods or there's a zombie apocalypse. You know, you're not left entirely without food. Uh, you can survive for a while. I'd say at this point I wouldn't be able to survive in the wild. I'd be able to uh, probably die very slowly. And uh, maybe by the time I was ready to die, I'd, I'd ha have enough foraging skills that I uh, wouldn't end up dying. So uh, anyway, it's fun. I, I, right now I'm going to give you a little tour around the mini farm uh, to see what kind of wild edible plants we've got growing naturally all around. So let's take a look. What we have here is sheep sorrel. And this is interesting because I have a, a foraging book that claimed that sheep sorrel doesn't even grow uh, this far south, but it clearly does. It's all over the yard. Um, this is generally probably past the stage where you'd want to eat it, not that it's going to hurt you or anything like that, but um, it's a little lusher one before it goes to seed. If you look over here, we have some of these, um, the, the leaves here. Now this is a classic example of a sheep sorrel uh, leaf, get that in focus there, and you see how it has the little barbs at the bottom there. And uh, that, this this is a nice one. It's it's really nice and um, sour. Mmm. Mmm. Very good. Prickly pears, for which this prickly pear plantation is named, are a really fun uh, survival food. Now, I'd, I'd call this a survival food because um, in order to eat it, you got to get through the barbs on it. Uh, I roasted one over the fire one time and, and tried to peel it apart and eat it. I did end up with a lot of little prickly things in my lips, like little hairs that you can kind of hardly see. Um, a lot of them will grow bigger than these ones here. We got some pretty poor, uh, you know, like really sandy soil, so it's just not um, full of nutrients. Uh, of course, these puppies have gotten a couple prickly pears in their, in their faces, um, so that's not the part you want to eat. You want to eat the inside, which is really sticky and um but it's but it's uh good to know for survival if you're down here in florida um or you know they grow out to texas and everything like that this one right here doesn't have anything growing on it yet um, but it is a sumac and what it will have is little berries on it that are kind of hard uh, uh berries that you can make a drink out of uh, there's a northern variety that is even better uh, called staghorn sumac but you can make a kind of lemonade tea sort of uh, drink from soaking the berries obviously there's no berries on there right now so here we can see another um, sumac and this has the the berries left over from last year so these aren't going to be good um, but this is what the cluster looks like so that should be ideally you know bright red at some point um, very similar looking to the staghorn sumac up north. That one's even densely, more densely packed, and I think it tastes better. I think it's more, um, it's like a sour sort of taste, but uh, there's different, you know, folk uh, medicinal properties to these sorts of things. Common mushroom you can find uh, that is edible is the puffball and the uh, giant puffball. This one is obviously not a giant one. So it has no stem and uh, it is white, but the, the issue is that it can be confused with some poisonous white mushrooms if you, if you uh, mistake an early one. So I'm gonna show you right now how to make sure you don't do that. What you do is take a knife, take your, like I said, this one's really small, really small. But yeah, let me get out here into the surface. So what you're gonna wanna do is cut it in half. And what you're doing is making sure that, so we're making sure that the inside here, where am I? Uh, does not have any stems. So if you look on this one, this is, it just has a little root. There's no actual, there's no actual stem. It's just a little root. So if there was any sort of indication that there's a stem in there, it's not what you're looking for. It's not the puffball. This one is, just looks like mozzarella. You know, if you look at the inside of that, it's nothing there except uh, just whiteness. So. so that's a good one. That's a little puffball. Yeah. We're gonna step into the garden for the next one here. 
uh, what we have growing is some purslane. Now purslane uh, likes to put itself in garden beds and actually you can see right next to purslane is the only poisonous or inedible uh, look-alike. So uh, this is purslane and then right on top of here this is uh, I think it's scourge but it's it looks kind of similar so you don't want to confuse those two. Uh, you want you want the kind with the red stem um, and these very uh, thick succulent leaves. It's gonna have this one. These have purple flowers that are not there right now, but um, this is another type that has yellow flowers. Uh, this is loaded with vitamins. Has tons of uh, tons of minerals on it. Here, let's get a look at another one. So this is a good one, branches out, kind of goes along the ground. Really good for you. Okay. So back along this wooded edge of the property, um, there's, there's something uh, called winter huckleberry that likes the edge of fields and that sort of thing. Um, these aren't ready yet, but these will be winter huckleberries, which are edible. Um, they're not really that great fresh, they're kind of waxy and, uh, and, and I guess, you know, chewy. Uh, but you can make pies out of them, you could juice them and, and get the juice out of them. Um, so that's another great one, not just survival, you could, you know, you could probably make candy or get some sugar out of them, and, um, and, and so it's a good one to know, winter huckleberry, and you're going to find that along fields, and it's kind of a uh, shrub, it can grow into like a, a tree-like sort of deal, but definitely more shrub-like, um, spreading out, and those will be purple. It'll be purple when they're ready. Down here we have some narrow-leaved plantain. Now obviously this is not um, the type of plantain that looks like bananas. This is a plant called plantain. Um, the the more common kind is, is common plantain. It's, the leaves aren't as narrow as this, but they still have the same um, uh, lines on them. Um, and Stella's going to help me explain. And Jake too. Yep. Do you like that? I don't know if dogs should eat that. Um, now this is, uh, you could eat it. You can cook it and eat it, or uh, you can also rub it on a bug bite and or, or bee sting, and it should soothe that. Um, internally, it soothes your uh, digestive system as well. So you can eat that instead of Pepto-Bismol if you're having issues. Anti-inflammatory too, so that's a, that's a good thing to to know about. So again, yeah, mo most people will have the the typical one, not the narrow leafed variety, um, but it looks the same. It's just wider, just a wider leaf. Here's an easy one. We got blackberries. All right. So these ones are gonna. Uh, you can see the leaf pattern there, and you can see the progression. They'll start off uh, red, and then they're gonna move into a Full on black and purple. I'm gonna pick that. I'm gonna eat it. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that's a sweet one. It tastes like a pear or something. Oh yeah. This is the best. Oops, I missed it. The only issue is that these are obviously prickly, so they might get ya. Mm. Oh, look at all these. It's a whole patch I missed. We our first patch matured a few weeks ago, so I kind of just assumed they were all done, but looks like we got more back here. Yeah, I'm going to come back here and pick some. Or I'll just eat them all. Now I'm trudging through this area, um, getting pricked by various prickly things like the uh, blackberries and the briars. This is another prickly one. Uh, that does have some edible parts to it. So you can see the thorns there and you can see the uh, distinct leaves on the briar. There's common briar, green briar, anything Smilax is uh, edible. What you can eat is the tip. Ah, I just got, just, raspberry got me, blackberry. Um, so this one, it looks a little past prime. So I wouldn't eat the tip of this one. But um, if the tip is still easy enough to break off with your your fingernail you can eat the tip and then you can follow it back and you can actually dig the roots of these uh, you can dig up the tubers smash them 
and make a drink, an anti-inflammatory drink with the tubers. Here we go. So we got got the Smilax here, so you can look at it, and the prickers stop somewhere. You got one there, and then you can bring them out. My phone is not wanting to focus today. So what you can do is just take the end off there and uh, just to prove that I'm not lying to you. Just take that whole thing. Mm. Yeah, it's mild. Does it not even bitter? It's good. You can actually uh, eat acorns. So pretty much anytime you um, have an oak tree, you're gonna have some sort of survival food there. But the issue is that most of the time, um, they're very the acorns are very bitter. They have tannins in them that you really have to leach out if you want to use them. So what you got to do is have access to clean water and either boil them or put them in a, in a clean uh, stream and let water run through them. Um, apparently there's a couple types of oaks that, you know, the white oak, oak family that will uh, give you acorns that are not bitter without as many tannins that you could eat right away. But otherwise the tannins are just going to be too much for you. They're going to leach out a lot of, um, I think, iron in your system. So you definitely want to remove that bitterness before you eat them, but you can make a uh, kind of... Uh, meal out of them, grind them down, and that's a great survival food. It'll give you the calories. So that's a good thing to keep in note. If you have acorns, uh, you don't have to starve to death. I picked some of that purslane from earlier, and I decided just to throw it in a jar, pack tight, and throw some apple cider vinegar on top. Um, and then I threw like garlic and ginger and um, a couple of hot peppers in there. So that's pretty much the best thing in the world for you. You'll live forever if you eat that. That's uh, that's a fact. The real fun part about foraging is uh, coming up with cool ways to use the stuff. So one way, uh, in, in addition to just eating sheep sorrel in the field or adding it to salads, you know, great little sour kick to it, I've uh, included the entire plant right here, including the roots, um, and soaked it in alcohol to make an extract out of it. And using, including the roots is the best way to get the anti-cancer um, activity out of the plant. I'll do a whole nother video on medicinal plants and, and I'll go more in depth in future videos um, about these particular plants. So you should probably subscribe if you liked it, uh, that way you'll be updated. Also follow me on Instagram, it's at Joe Jarvis Me, and I'll post a link below as well. But my Instagram's got the pictures of awesome plants, awesome goats, because everybody loves goats, so you definitely want to follow me for that. Uh, just nature in general, and you'll uh, get to check out the mini farm. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.